Now on UK Health Radio, treat yourself to an upgrade. Pack away your low self-esteem. Leave behind that empty feeling. Stow your fears and doubts in the overhead locker. And go from stress to authentic success with Danielle Sachs. to you. Welcome once again to another show. And I'm so excited this week because I'm going to do something different. One of the antidotes on of stress is to me is kindness. And I want to talk this week all about kindness to you, being kind to yourself, being kind to others. And let's first see, we are going to talk to an expert, of course, uh, who is specialized in kindness. And that is pre Deaf, a, a beautiful lady that I'm going to talk about just now. But I first wanted to talk to you about the definition of kindness, because you and I, we might have a different view on this because kindness has been defined, first of all, as the actions that you and I intend to benefit others, but it also might be defined as having or showing a friendly, generous, considerate nature and showing respect and concern. But it can also be the quality of being friendly, generous and considerate and the quality of being warm and approachable. Have you seen yourself as kind? Are you a person that is showing kindness in their life? Are you someone who prioritizes kindness? Because kindness can be called also generosity, affection, compassion, gentleness, goodwill, tenderness, understanding. There are so many words that you can describe kindness with. And some even have suggested that kindness should be distinguished from the acts of kindness or the behavior, because true kindness, the type of kindness that improves our well-being, comes from a desire to be kind. In fact, practicing kindness when you don't want to can make you feel obligated or even resentful. So that's why I'm saying that each person needs to define kindness in their own way. So what is kindness to you? We are going to talk about kindness the whole show and if we want to increase if you want to increase your happiness and well-being you need to start engaging in acts of kindness that feel right to you it is so important that it feels right to you that it is aligned within with your values and needs so it is important to choose kindness as one of your priorities in your life because it's such a good way of stress management. Across many studies, kindness has been linked to greater well-being. So in a show where we talk often about stress, it is as important to talk about kindness as well. For example, Research has looked at spending money on others as well as practicing random acts of kindness as two common ways that people can increase their happiness. So it's all about being uh, increasing your happiness, your well-being. And so everything that we can do to increase that, I want to talk to you about in this show. So today we are going to talk about pre uh, about kindness with a beautiful lady, as I say, called Preet Dev. Now, Preet Dev is called the kindness curator. Now, if you hear her voice, if you see her shining, her energy, you can see why. She is the co-founder and CEO of Kindnamic and dedicated to transforming corporate culture to kindness. I think it's such a beautiful mission because with de- decades of experience in technology, Preet really understands the importance of employee well-being. So Kindnamic is actually empowering the global community of ambassadors to spread kindness throughout major businesses. And they have platforms that create harmony between leadership and the workforce. So they are saying that 
pandemic can strengthen the heartbeat of your business through their expertise in cultivating a culture of kindness. So we're going to talk about kindness the whole show. And I'm very excited to present to you and to talk to Preet about it. I know Preet since about five, six years ago. And I have to say, her energy has always touched me deeply. And I always knew that she was going to do something great in this world. And with her partner, Christian, who we might have one other day on the show, they are really doing a great job. So I'm going to leave you just now. And after the break, we will talk about kindness with Preet Dev. Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. Welcome back and as I said in the intro, I am so excited to do this interview today with a really special lady and someone that I actually met about five years ago, Preet. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I find it so exciting to speak to you today and see in five years' time how what you've realized and how far you've come. But can we first ask the question, um, what happened in your life that what was a stressful event in your life? Because I, I believe that you had a burnout and that you had, you had a stressful period. Can you just tell us a little bit about that story? Sure. Um, I moved from India uh, 20 plus years ago and I found myself working in the corporate world and I didn't know I was heavily dyslexic. Oh, okay. And dyspraxic also. And I always constantly place myself in a very stressful situations, like very competitive environments where people didn't, um, they just cared about themselves. Mm. <laughs> and I didn't thrive in those environments. And I found myself only found a finding uh, environment, co- a collaborative environment, uh, only five years ago. <laughs> Wow. Then I realized, oh, actually, I thrive in a collaborative, cooperative environment. And uh, so, yeah, it took a very, very big toll on me, even the university. So after I quit my career in the corporate world in 2013. Yes. I, I was unable to work. My body gave up on me and I was alone and I didn't know what to do. Mm. Um, and my boss uh, sort of uh, came to my house and said, well, you get very stressed at work. Um, I think you, if you sign this document, then you can leave now and then you can come back when you, when Oof. you. <laughs> so, um, so that was that. And I remember si- uh, signing this document. Uh, it was obviously resignation left. Like of I didn't course. know that's what signing. Mm. And, um, and I told myself, I think I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I don't know what that looks like, but I'm going to give it a try. So from there, I um, I realized I was dyslexic. I I loved learning because I was asking a lot of deep questions. I also had at the same time I was working in the corporate world. I also had a lot of spiritual teachers. Okay. I, every holidays I will travel on top of the mountain. Um, in fact, few times a year, uh, every holiday I would spend with a different spiritual t- teacher. Wow. And um, I just wanted to be around them and understand meaning of life. Why are we here? Mm. And uh, so from that, I already had very deep spiritual practices anyway, but I was working in a very competitive environment. And so what I was learning, and I was also studying a lot of leadership books like Stephen Covey, Peter Drucker kind of thing. And uh, so, and Napoleon Hill was my favorite. Mm. Um, And so when I would go into the corporate world and I'm like, they don't say any of the words and everything I'm learning. How come in my office, nobody practices that for this is normal to me. This is how I feel and think mm. and do things. But it's totally the opposite in the world I play in the co- it's true. business and the, you know, corporate world game. Um, So it was really a lot of confusion. And this weighed on me um, a lot to a point where I couldn't move my hand on my own. Mm. So total depletion. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Then after I found out I was dyslexic, I went to university. So I realized, fine, if my problem is learning and I love learning, then I'm going to go learn to learn. (laughs) And um, I did first business degree. I think when I met you, I was under pressure because I, uh, I was studying with all these young people and they were so like academic and so fast and like crude and a lot of different things. Like I was not. And then I placed myself on from corporate world, uh, competitive environment into academia, which was not different. No, I mean, that's the same, actually. Really, that's yeah. interesting. Hey, yeah. So that, was, that didn't give me no, no comfort either or find my where I'm supposed to be, but it gave made me a lot resilient. Mm. really really resilient and uh, understand and have some structure in my brain um and only five years ago when um i i met a chairman of ceo space um he created he grew up with napoleon hill and um his dad actually when this book was written it was written in his house and he was a baby at that time and his dad was hosting the table and on the table was Jack Kennedy, Thomas Edison, Walt Disney, Zig Ziglar, <gasps> wow. and Napoleon Hill. Mm. And my mentor, Bernie Doman, sat in Napoleon Hill's lap and called him Uncle Nappy. <laughs> wow. So, and so basically his dad started the personal development uh, industry movement. In, but in isn't North that America. amazing how the universe has brought you from, from that that non collaborative non non understanding non spiritual to a world where you suddenly have all the big guys the big names actually i think it's a sincere love for knowledge mm. so you attract, so i had so much sincere love for knowledge and people and so that made me uh, magnetized towards yes. great leaders and um, yeah from so bernie started something called ceo space uh, nearly 36 Plus years ago, unfortunately, we lost him a couple of years ago to COVID. Oh, uh, is it? Okay. And um, so he uh, created this movement um, about collaboration and cooperation, uh, cooperate with other businesses. They um, created like a huge movement, funding great businesses. I think they funded something like more than $2 billion to okay. businesses. Wow. Uh, their organization so we have like 100,000 members so I learned a new I, I realized that where spiritual and business meets right. there's a collaborative environment where we can all be kind to each other and mm. uh, and be you are your own universe and I'm my own universe mm. and uh, we can show up for each other and power up each other's universes but we said by saying that when you're meditating when we're creating um when we are in a creative space and the quiet space the in the flow, there's so many words to explain it. Mm-hmm. We are all one. Yes. I anyway. Agree. So kindness, that's why kindness is the, that most important value. I see that kindness is that glue, which brings us together and join because a non-collaborative competitive environment is that like, um, a, 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 like a broken software. It, 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 that feels that I have to be separate. I, I explain in a, another way, uh, the people who think they are all up for themselves, um, it's like be, they feel they're like malignant self who mm. decides that I'm going to be on my own and I can do it. I'm fulfilled in my own thinking. And then it goes and collaborates with, still collaborates with another malignant self yeah. and forms a tumor. It's a toxicity. Hmm. Yeah. You could yeah. explain it like a really toxic something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, can, I, I just want to say to 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 the person listening and being interested in in what you are doing. Uh, I have to say to you, especially uh, Preet, that when I met you, you were already to me, even if you were quite in a down sp- spiral at that moment, like you said, you know, you just five years ago. You were already to me an example of kindness. Mm. I have to say that because mm. it is the truth. When you see you, when you see your glow, when you, so talk a little bit about how kindness has become such a value and such a, almost a purpose in your life to spread kindness in the world, isn't it? 
yes yes um think of like when something is uh, broken like i i say it in this way when my mom when i was little my mom used to knit a lot and all the children because i was the eldest um my little or uh, siblings they used to make her wool um you know like this crush yeah. um, you know i don't know how to say it but they yeah. just like, used to tangle with each other so i would sit there find a one uh spot and then start to untangle it slowly slowly and i used to find that really fun to do that and we didn't have any toys oh, great it was one of the things i did <laughs> um so my point is that kindness is that value mm-hmm. you pick that one strand and you can have handle on all the other values i feel happiness is not a very worthy goal to go after people say i want to be happy i want to be happy mm-hmm. it's not a worthy goal you cannot be happy by acquiring things and just wanting being happy mm. what you can be happy is by being collaborative being kind to yourself and others and, and bring value uh, uh spiritual values business values creative values law all different things and happiness is a gift that you get in mm. return yes i agree so could could you say then preach that um an antidote for stress is start to being kind so that things come together in another way would that be yeah most definitely um and also when you're kind to others and they are more likely to then support you in whatever mm. challenge because we we can be master of a lot of different things but not all of them so mm. we always going to rely on um so stephen covey said this perfectly actually uh in order for us to be interdependent we do have to be independent first so we have to be like self reliant um and then that helps us to be uh then eligible or be capable to be uh, uh supportive to others mm. so that that is true and then there's a journey of being kind um well like small 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 acts and buying yourself a gucci bag is not be kind to yourself mm. making sure you had enough glasses of water today hydrating yourself is kind is kind oh that's a beautiful one i like that instead of buying yourself yeah i i see what you're saying so it's it's kindness to your body to your spirit to your mind to your so it's 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 that kind of kindness to yourself and if you're going to watch like all the media uh and watch movies uh which are only inflicted violence that's not kind to yourself mm. when you mm. meditating and you watch like i love watching great inspiring movies mm. it's one of my like guilty pleasures you can say True. Like, <laughs> uh, True. one of my friends she's a therapist she calls it um uh, hollywood therapy ah <laughs> and so i love hollywood therapy and so it just helps me to see things differently and i'm very involved in the movie like i, I can see that how so my brain cells go like you know different connections mm. then i can solve my problems differently um so all those things that you you do for yourself like mm. um which are nourish, nourish, nourishing you so when you're nourishing yourself then you have more to give to others yeah true it's Because filling you, your own cup first sure mm. and and but also it's okay in my eyes that if your cup is not 100% full yet but you are in a process you know how to do it yes and sometimes it, it may go like very if you allow if you can allow sometimes uh if you're not awakened um you know sometimes so many things happen and then it kind of weighs down on you and you forget to fill your own cup so it's okay to tell your people colleagues and friends who you trust actually my cup is empty right now yes. i need to nudge and that's kind yeah. because you're aware and something happened whatever happened and it weighed down on you weighed you down and now you can replenish yourself that's kind is it setting boundaries to yeah. others so that you are kind to yourself enough to set boundaries and say no to others you can say that but it's uh, i i i i've read a lot about this setting boundaries i i feel it's it's more than that it's mm. about sharing your true self with yes. others so if yes. today i feel like um i'm not going to set boundaries if you call me and say pre i i something happen i need you to be present 
right? So if at that time, if my energy was not there, I get energy. I I push myself to show up for somebody I care. Mm. You gain the energy. Mm. uh, because You matter to me. Right. So you show up for each other in that way. So, but if I say no, today I'm not feeling up for it. I'm, I'm like uh, depleted, you know, sorry. How Mm. is that kind? Mm. So, but you get energy. You don't. I see what you're saying. Generate energy by being kind. So Mm. the decision is a lifestyle. It's true. So how did you and your partner, Christian, how did you, because you are co-founder, hey, how did you come to found, uh, you know, to co-found Kindnemic? Tell us a little bit, because it's such a beautiful initiative. It's such a powerful thing. Uh, Thank you. Um, Me and Christian had been um, together for five years. Just before we met you, we got Mm -hmm. together and um, we wanted to do something in spiritual values bring that into the world and we tried different different ways and uh we thought it was integrity for a very long time i was trying to write a book about it and every time i was interviewed or i was interviewing somebody else i was only talked about integrity that was my prime value i was like looking into into integrity in politics integrity in business integrity in friendship how does that look like and feel like and Mm. and how can it elevate our lives and then last year uh, in January, February, I think it was, um, one of my mentors challenged me and said, Pre, actually, you are the queen of kindness. This is what you need to be for. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Thank mm. you. Um, and then uh, we came home. First, I was like, um, I wasn't sure. And then I came home that day and me and Christian ended up creating uh, a kindness game which basically in the boardroom, uh, you know, people who are, uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm a weak hearted person. I would say I'm a gentle hearted person. Yes. So if I'm in the boardroom, people say very harsh words. It affects me mm. because it, the languaging doesn't suit my, my mm. personality. Mm. And if my colleagues actually want to get the best out of me, they need to be careful of that. Because if they're not, they don't get the be- the benefit of be- me being my creativity, my genius that I have, and I can bring a lot on the table. So, because is it because without that you don't have a real connection, a, a, a good connection? Is it no, about it, connection as well or not? It uh, it curls my heart inside. Okay, it doesn't let me open my heart. Yeah, so if you go in contraction. Mm. Yeah, so when I'm in a cooperative environment it just my heart is open I can always be myself my intellect is fully connected engaged and True. it's more connection with myself, myself. Yeah. I lose when I'm in a competitive environment and I think it might be true for a lot of people maybe they haven't been able to identify that yet mm. and um, so uh, we realized we created this boardroom uh, game where corporate leaders can play with each other so they can use synonyms and uh, and we create like ambassador of kindness into the, yeah. into the team. That was the first thing came up. But then we also realized we had created several other technologies that we were going to build before even last year. They all sat under this kindness value. And we were thinking, thinking, okay, we got like 10 products, 12 products, um, two games. And so we also ended up creating like ki- monopoly to kindopoly. Oh, that's exciting. So like, you know, rather than ext- extraction game, you bring in like con- contribution game. How do we bring value to others? Oh, great. And, uh, so that kind of games and uh, creating superheroes, uh, me and Christian picked up a, a deck of cards called Villains uh, by Disney. And I was like, why on earth Disney would create this game yes. teaching children how to be villains to each other? Yes, it's true. So, you know, only corporate world, we also created some games for children mm. as well. And they can solve the, um, you know, the uh, sustainable development goals and mm. play games like that. So we can actually do something constructive with that time rather than I said to my nephew the other day that I'm very concerned about you, that you play these games and it's going to affect your mind. Because, uh, Masi, I only play in my game. I kill uh, zombies and no blood comes out. So I'm OK. <laughs> So wow. really super concerned about children as well, right? And anyway, so we created a lot of games for the corporate world. And uh, and then we thought, what brand do we give to this 
entity yeah, concept and yeah right and we thought okay kind it has to have a word kind in it of course and uh, dynamic movements of kindness we came up with several names and um and they weren't available but this one was the best one anyway so we created dynamic movements of kindness kind kindness okay kinamic yeah so we took the y out and it's beautiful kin being the family and um and then dna of humanity is mm. kind and then mic the imp- amplifying the voices oh, um, beautiful that that are kind voices uh, so we can we can make our world better place like gandhi ji said create the world you want to change that you want to see in the world mm. so that's that's how it started and and why is kindness so important to you or to anyone else why why is why kindness yeah um it could be other values for other people uh, for me kindness is important because you have to anchor yourself in something mm. in order to grow you have to like in order to thrive you you have to be anchored mm. i learned uh, in a very um, early on in my spiritual um, journey that a lot of people like robbie william um they super 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 successful but are so unhappy inside um yeah. how did that occur so i realized that um more out you go you have to be more deeper, deeper inside in, inside that's beautifully said mm. yeah and then you have to anchor yourself in something mm. that really is meaningful to you is worthwhile your time mm. and your energy so kindness kindness became that value for me that beautiful for the rest of my life that's my journey um and why not like it's it doesn't cost me anything it's something so small like just sharing with each other like oh and to be honest it it, it reflects back to me i receive more of kindness course. just uh, one day we were this at this lecture and this um author had written a book on kindness and um but it was more mechanical from the head not from the heart mm. um uh, but anyway um i was in this lecture and from the room where the room was in the to- in this university that where the like the le- washroom uh, was it was quite far and within like 7 minutes walk i had about seven people showing kindness to me wow somebody held door for me and it was raining really badly it was a huge campus and they said showed the umbrella to me somebody held the door and showed me where the uh, like the washrooms were and in the bathroom when i was in there they said oh do you have a tissue let me give it to you something like it was crazy <laughs> beautiful but isn't that how it works the the energy we give out comes back like a boomerang <laughs> tenfold i mean it's a law mm, it's, a law. it's it, a law of energy yeah it comes mm. back. whatever we give it has to come back to you so yes. when you understand that so people who are um always wanted to keep things to themselves um i can say it in this way we only get to keep what you give away oh yes that's a law yeah so we willingly share with others that's what only it's like it's like you know a catch 22 you know people yeah. think oh I, i it's mine i have to keep this and um so that's a short term thinking and it's coming out of fear but mm. when you understand your spiritual um ent- you, uh, when we un- see ourselves as a spiritual entity as an inf- infinite being mm. there's no fear True. and of sharing is there a quote that you live by is there a something that you say i mean the fact of creating and founding um kindnamic is already you know a big thing but is there a you and christian or you for yourself even coming out of that stressful you know being this less lexic and all that is there a quote that you stand by that you've integrated in your life that has become something important um about kindness where the kindness reigns yes, you like can where, you can choose yeah kindness is, yeah you can it's a lifestyle you you can choose that i'm this is the way i'm going to live and if when we fill our heart so much and some people say oh um when i was in a spiritual community um a lot of people still uh were living in pra- like a 
worldly world type thing mm. they did, they hadn't inherited those val- spiritual values they were um sort of they were there for a, like a social club rather than re- and i was always there because i wanted to learn how to be the best version of myself and uh, so this one particular person i remember she's like oh it's about other people taking you for granted if you mm. show kindness and you open your heart they can attack you and they can you know so she said it's about that so you have to fight back and i was like i always remember that and i thought um because your heart is so full mm-hmm. and if you give a little bit away and so what mm. you have so much more to give you have so you can produce more that's your that's your uh give me that's your uh, gift no give me yeah. your gift that you it's, can is it a life force to me it sounds like a life force the kindness you know it's 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 unlimited i mean it's there's no limit in it no in kindness no because end of the day when um before you took the avatar of daniel and i took the daniela and i took the avatar of preet what were we mm. we were pieces of consciousness true and we were all connected mm. and now we play this game called life in this earth plane and and um we need to oh, we the happiness that we're looking for it can come to us by togetherness mm, beautiful so mm. kindness is that value that's why kindness is the uh, the formula that i feel is the most important uh, value and um, it it reminds us that we are all one mm. beautiful mm. well thank you for that um the time goes by so fast preet is there any thing you can add to this any advice or any tip or any info on kinemic or anything that people who are listening and who are inspired are mm-hmm. can 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 reach you or can do something with or anything mm-hmm. sure um i think businesses are can be have the opportunity to be forced for good and leadership is an opportunity for greatness i agree Mm. and business leaders the reason we are geared towards corporate world because because business leaders i don't know how this happened and why this happened but um became like we we heard about um this very big airline i wouldn't name them because for whatever reason but they uh, the all the leaders corporate leaders took 10% gave 10% pay cut across the board to save the company when the pandemic happened and then very conveniently um insto- it reinstated their own pay and uh, forgot about the their people and obviously people were um people were striking and there are strikes happening all over the world why mm. because their leaders their business leaders are being um really unfair to them yes and there's a lack of trust so if business leaders were to look at kindness you know we have people like uh, uh, ratan tata and bobby um, we have a great organization in the us called bob ray miller uh, run by bob chapman barry ray miller sorry uh, bo- run by bob chapman he he inherited a loss making engineering company and made into a multi billion dollar company by showing caring Exactly. and caring is another um uh, arm of kindness yes. and um and i in fact think there is uh, caring is a child of kindness <laughs> so all the other values i see is the children of kindness mm. um so uh, there are so many leaders who've given us examples that by being kind to your people is not going to make you so this organization i'm talking about who took 10% pay cut and reason say they pay for a very short time they became 10% rich in their bank perhaps but very very short time very mm. quick they became more poorer 100% poorer in their soul of and and, uh, and then more poorer in their banks because when people are striking they're having so much losses and yes. uh, so much chaos and, and so they they think of very short term benefit yeah. which is, so my whole life is now dedicated to bring kindness into corporate world and that's where we starting from but then governments and 
an individual. So wherever you work, so my my wish or my advice or um, my dream would be to um, people will think of kindness uh, to bring wherever you are in your journey in, at your home. Uh, Bob even said, Bob, Bob Chapman even said that uh, when businesses treat their people kindly at work, they are going to be showing more kindness to the children and their families. Of course. At home. Of course. And so it's, it's a whole, it's a ripple effect. Hmm correlated and um so i'm just asking everybody that show kindness uh, and if you're a business leader um please um you know bring kindness to your workplace and then so we can make a better world for the coming generations oh thank you for that i'm gonna close the the interview with that because isn't that what it's all about that we put that little stone in the water and it has a ripple effect it's it's circles 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 everywhere i really trust that we have inspired uh so many people today with this conversation because i totally agree that kindness is one of our biggest values that we need in the world we need it preet so thank you so much for being you for being an exceptional an exceptional human being and such a kind kind human being that i really have appreciated from the moment i met you so thank you for this conversation and i will come back to the listener just now after this little break thank you thank you good wishes UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. Yes, thank you for coming back to me and listening in again. Uh, I am your host, Daniel Sachs, and we are talking today about kindness. And it is absolutely important to choose kindness. It is a conscious choice that you do. And Preet was really explaining to us in a, in a beautiful way why kindness is important and how it can really affect your well-being, how it strengthens your relationships, your productivity, your empathy and trust, all these things. And it was interesting that she was talking about books of like Stephen Covey and Napoleon Hill, all great authors who really talk about things like kindness as much as they talk about leadership and anything else. So kindness is actually something that we underestimate. It's often something that we have forgotten. And when Preet was saying to be kind to yourself and stop watching violence. That was something that really stays with me because we are often so kind to others, but we also forget to be kind to ourselves. So, for example, like she said, stop watching violence because it's it's something it's like a sharp knife, she said, on your consciousness. It And it's true. We have to do with violence all day long if we want to, if we watch the news, if we watch on the screen, if we watch science fiction movies, violent movies. And it's the question is, is that kind to your soul? So she talked about how you need to be anchored to, you know, to really act in kindness. And the more out you go, the deeper you have to go inside. And I cannot agree more with that. We only get to keep what we give away. And that is how we can burst our fear, how we can conquer our fear. And when she talked about kindness as being a lifestyle, I really appreciate that. It's like authenticity can be a, a, a lifestyle it's about compassion can be a lifestyle um, integrity can be a lifestyle so we there are so many practical values that we need to install in our lives and you this week have had a beautiful conversation between Preet and myself around kindness how you beat stress with kindness and I'm gonna just end this show with a few quotes that I really, really want to add onto this interview because there's a beautiful quote of Lao Tzu that says, 
kindness in words creates confidence. Kindness in thinking creates profoundness. And kindness in giving creates love. So that is how important kindness is to you and to me. So that maybe motivates you to start reflecting on the concept of kindness. And Lady Gaga, to go into the modern world, um, in the current situations, Lady Gaga has a quote that has to do with kindness. And it goes like this. I've been searching ways to heal myself. And I found that kindness is the best way. Now, that's what I was talking about, about it's not just about being kind to others. It's also about being kind to yourself. So I'm going to ask you here, how can you be more kind to yourself in the coming days, in the coming week? What can you do in your life to be kind to yourself? Is it stopping watching violence? Is it stopping putting sugar in your body or alcohol in your body? Is it stop uh, sitting at the screen the whole day and not going into nature? So it, there's a lot of things that we can talk about of, when we talk about being kind to yourself. And I leave it up to you. And I trust that this week you've had a few insights, a few, a few reflections, a few strategies or tips on how to be kind to yourself and how important it also is to be kind to others because that heals you too. So I will see you next week. Bye-bye for now. From Stress to Authentic Success was presented by Danielle Sachs. Join Danielle at the same time next week here on UK Health Radio. And meanwhile, for more on how to thrive in business and everyday life by being true to yourself, go to daniellesachs.com.